Alright guys, welcome finally to the Galactic Empire Q&A, and yeah, if the mic sounds a little weird, that's because I have the fan on, because these Q&As run a while, so yeah, it's going to sound a little weird, and my room, it gets really hot when the fan's off, so the fan's staying on because I don't want to be sweating like a pig. Also, um, I want to thank everyone who sent in questions, and yeah, in case anyone didn't get their questions answered, that usually means it was marked as spam on my end, and either, or was not just even put on the list at all. Sometimes YouTube does that. Anyway, let's jump right into this Q&A, starting off with Jalen Ford asking, Tarkin gets a glimpse into the future and looks at the First Order. How impressed or disappointed is he by the group as a whole? I think, honestly, he would be... I think it would be a mixture. If Tarkin got to see the First Order and how it's very, the First Order is very mil is a very military operation, even more so than the Galactic Empire, because the Galactic Empire was guided by the Emperor, who was a Sith Lord, and still we don't know if Snoke is a Sith Lord or something of that degree. He does know the Force, but there's st there's certainly a major military drive in the First Order because it was built out of the remnants of what the Emperor left, which is a military force. Now. I think he would agree that a lot of, you know, what they did and their tactics, I mean, b building the Starkiller base, I think he would be massively impressed by the Starkiller base. Um, I think he would have a lot of respect for Hux, but on the other hand, I feel like H he, f I think um, he would look at Hux at the same time and go, the man's too emotional to do the, his job. The man's clearly too obsessive about his work, and Tarkin got obsessive too, but he knew when to quit. And the other thing, I don't know if he would agree with the whole taking children thing. Um, Tarkin was a very boots-on-the-ground kind of person, and he loved the idea of enlistment. So I don't know if he would really go for the idea of taking children and making them quintessentially Hitler youth. I don't know if he would agree with that, because, again, he was a very, you know, if you read the Tarkin novel, then you know that he was a very, you know, boots-on-the-ground, you know, soldiers-depend-on-one-another kind of person. You know, it doesn't need to be drilled in your head, but, you know, there needs to be... Action, you know, you need to love your empire, not forced to love it. Anyway. So I think it would be a mixed bag in the end, but in the, on a whole, I think he would be very... I think he would really enjoy the First Order. Anyway. How does a Stormtrooper celebrate when he actually hits something? Oh! Oh, when Stormtroopers hit something, you mean like when they shot Uncle Ben and Aunt Beru? Or when they tagged Leia in the arm? I am so sick of this bullshit. Because here's the thing, I understand, yet yeah, stormtroopers are clearly terrible shots, but the other thing is, you know, you can't shoot and kill your own, um, you can't kill the main cast. You need to look, yeah, it's, it gets kind of ridiculous. I will admit that it's totally fucking ridiculous that, you know, stormtroopers can't hit anybody, brr. Well, it's the main cast, they're not supposed to hit them, they're just supposed to emulate danger. And remember, they killed hundreds of rebels in, you know, the Battle of Endor. And let's not forget the space battle in Return of the Jedi as well. And not to mention all the tro all the rebel troops they killed in first, you know, in Empire Strikes Back. I'm just saying, you know, they do hit people, just not the main cast. Is <laughs> is they can wound them, but yeah, can't kill them. How does the Empire deal with trolls on the internet? Here's what happens. They track the guy, the, tr the person's signal, send a strike team of stormtroopers into the guy's house, break it down, put a bag over his head, drag him outside, then pop, and then blaster bolt through the back of the head outside, take out what's left of the family, burn the bodies, or make an example on them on the hollow feed. That's how you do it. <clears throat> That's how they do it. Anyway, staying with those questions, Jalen, moving on now to Joel Davis, who asks, if the main six Sunset Shimmer and Starlight Glimmer all worked for the Galactic Empire, what would their positions be and why? Okay, so obviously Rainbow Dash, she would be a TIE Fighter pilot, like an ace TIE Fighter pilot, she would definitely be that. Um, I think also, yeah, she would be ace TIE Fighter pilot. Um, um, Twilight would be part of the science division of the Empire, you know, obviously a major engineer. Um, Pinky would be a terrifying inquisitor. <laughs> She'd be making cupcakes out of every, you know, out of Jedi's organs, basically. Uh, Fluttershy, I don't know what Fluttershy would be. Maybe, I don't know. I guess Rarity would be the the uniform, des a person who designs the uniforms. I don't know. Applejack would be hardcore engineer for the Empire, probably constructing de the Death Star and Star Destroyers and Super Star Destroyers. Um, 
Yeah, Rarity would be, you know, a tailor for the Empire. Fluttershy, again, I don't know. Starlight Glimmer would probably be a moth, or a grand moth, um, and Sunset Asset would also be an Inquisitor. Anyway, so there you go. Second question. How would you write a story in the Galactic Empire versus the Dalek Empire? Um, hmm. Hmm. I guess maybe that the Empire is is dealt is going further into beyond the Outer Rim, and they discover Scaro, and, you know, battle ensues. That's kind of all I really got right off the fly. Anyway. Again, I'm sorry if the mic sounds really weird. It's just, you know, fan needs to be on, or I'm gonna... Or this is gonna be hell for me. So sorry. I know it's it's not pleasant, I understand. Third question. What, do you, what would you think... It, what would happen if Tarkin had lived to see the death of Palpatine and Vader at the end of... Uh, at the Battle of Endor? Okay, so... What I think Tar what would happen is that had Tarkin survived um, the destruction of the Death Star, I think what would have happened is that, in, uh, you know, him and Thrawn would rebuild the Empire. The Empire would look to Tarkin because Tarkin, right after Vader and Palpatine, he was the head honcho. He was like, uh, him, Vader, and Palpatine made like this dark trinity between the three of them, and if, you know, anything happened to Vader and Palpatine, it probably would be um, to Tarkin that would go, it, the uh, military forces would go to. And plus, you know, um, I could only imagine him and Thrawn working together. I feel like him and Thrawn would, be, you know, it wouldn't be antagonistic towards one another. They would be very melding very well, because again, both military backgrounds, and I feel like those two to get working together, um, yeah, with Tarkin at, at top and, um, Thrawn at second in command, yeah, they would probably, you know, make a very deadly empire. Anyway, so there you go. Thank you for those questions, Joel Davis. Moving on now to King Nazaru, who asks, wouldn't it be funny if the Empire ever did a version of the My Safe Space song from South Park to glorify the Empire and demonize the Jedi and Rebels? Yeah, that would be pretty funny. Second question. If more Old Republic material like Revan's story and Knights of the, of the Fallen Empire arc becomes canon again, how do you think it should influence the story to be relevant, um, excluding... F um, oh, you're, you don't like Force Awakens, though. All right, to each his own. Okay. Um, if it does be... I don't know how this ties in with the Empire, but I just want it to be canon. There you go. I just, I just want it to be canon. That Stop teasing us with Revan. Just do Revan already. God damn it. All right. How long, how long do you think the ancient Sith Emperor Darth Vitite, or Volcorum, and his wrath, Darth, Scur Darth Scourge, last against the Emperor, Darth Sidious, and Darth Vader? Man, here's the thing. Palpatine was classified as one of the most powerful Sith Lords in history. But then you look at how powerful Volcorum was, and then you realize, shit, I don't know if they... Ugh, that's a scary thought. So I don't know. Think of those questions. King Nazaru moving on now to Matt Kaiser 8 who asks... Do you think Deadpool can take on the the Galactic Empire? Yeah, probably. The guy's crazy like a fox, so... Yeah, <laughs> I think he could do it. Second question. What new weapons would you give the Empire? How about a weapon that... Uh, I don't know, maybe... Because when I think of something, it's like, Oh, the Empire already thought of that. The Empire already thought of that. Maybe a weapon that, I don't know, disables a ship's um, everything and just leaves them dead in space for them to take over? I don't know. Third question, could Mogo take on the Death Star? I, yeah, not only do I think Mogo could fight, you know, take on the Death Star, I think he could destroy the Death Star. Because it's a Green Lantern versus a guy with one, a, be, a, a, a a battle station, excuse me, with a single beam, so I think he could do it. So think of those questions, Matt Kaiser 08. Moving on now to George Poldio. Hope I'm saying that last name right. And first question is, why did the Empire hate non-human species? Well... It's never really explained fully, but the main reason why that a lot of people have theorized, and myself included, is that a lot of the non-human, you know, the reason why it was very human-centric was because um, the teachings of Darth Plagueis to Palpatine. Because Palp um, Plagueis was a mun who was a very, he was very evil, very, like all typical Dark Lords of the Sith. And a lot of his hate, you know, a lot of his... Um, teachings really traumatized Palpatine to the point where maybe that kind of rubbed off and led to, no, it's only going to be humans, you know? Only human um, Sith Lords, and only human Empire, with the exception of Thrawn, but still. 
anyway, so that's how I've kind of thought of it. The other thing is that I feel like, you know, deep down Palpatine was a very, you know, it's a very racial kind of thing as well, um, or xenophobic kind of feeling as well in that regard. But anyway, second question. Do you think Disney will be smart enough to make Star Wars the Thrawn Empire miniseries like the Star Wars Clone Wars series? Uh, I don't think we'll ever get... Uh, the only time I think we'll get Thrawn is in the sequel to, to that god-awful Star Wars Aftermath novel. <sighs> Just fuck. Anyway. Um, so, third question. If Star Wars Rebels was created by the same guy that made Cartoon Network's Star Wars miniseries, how scary would Stormtroopers be? Probably really scary. You know, if Gennady Tarkovsky did Star Wars Rebels... Yeah, I probably would like it a lot more, because the more I watch Rebels, the more I'm like, I really don't care about this show. Anyway, so moving right along, thank you for those questions, George. is Master Video Studios who asks, uh, Master Video Studios asks, which important Imperial personnel from the original trilogy do you think we'll see in Rogue One? Personally, you, want to, uh, you said you wanted to see Tarkin. I would like to see Tarkin too, but at the same time, I don't, because, again, Peter Cushing was just so good in that role, and I feel like, honestly, that... Um, I feel like it would be a disservice to do anything like a motion capture to, you know, screen uh, Tarkin or, you know, recast him. I just feel like that would not... Be, if anything... Well, I'll give it this. If it's as long as it, if it's Stephen Stanton, who actually he kind of looks like a young Peter Cushing, and I say young very loosely because he, I think he's what in his thirties now. But it, you know, he did he is the voice actor for Tarkin in Rebels as well as he did in Star Wars: Clone Wars. Um, I would be okay if he came in to play Tarkin in Rogue One because I feel like he would. You know, I feel like not only is he a good voice actor for Tarkin, I feel like. Um, he could get his mannerisms and whatnot, because he's always said, you know, I would like to play that, so... But at the same time, you know, it's at the same time, I just, I feel like it would, it, you should just, you should mention Tarkin, but not have him in there. We're already getting Mon Mothma in there, so, I don't know. Anyway. Thank you for those questions. Oh, thank you for that question. Master Video Studios, moving on now to Andrew Varney, who asks... The Galactic Empire encounters the UNSC from Halo. How much damage are we looking at? A lot. But I feel like... Look, I feel like the UNSC would, would put up a valiant fight, but let's face it, the Empire just has a way more advanced technology at their disposal. You know, Death Star, Star Destroyers, Super Star Destroyers, TIE Fighters, TIE Interceptors, TIE Bombers, all of that stuff. Just there to just wreck your shit, so... It'd be a hard battle. The UNSC would probably down several um, Star Destroyers, but still. Anyway. Second question. Which incarnation of the Doctor, companions included, would you like to see tangling with Stormtroopers? I kind of want to see Amy, uh, Amy and the Doctor run around from Stormtroopers. <laughs> that would be kind of fun. Third question. In a fatal four-way death match of Unicron, the second Death Star, the Cluster, fully formed, and the Death Egg, which planetary exterminator would come out on top? I think, honestly, Unicron, because Unicron can actually transform into a giant fucking robot that can stand on a planet, and the rest of them are just kind of planet size. so... Yeah, uh, I gotta give it to Unicron. Second of those questions, Andrew Varney, who a uh, and uh, moving on now to Darth Venom, who asks, What would happen if Thrawn was in charge of either the first or second Death Star, and how do you think the Battle of Yavin or Endor would have played out? I feel like if Thrawn was given more to do rather than just do campaigns out beyond the Outer Rim... Because here's the thing, yeah, he was, made, he was a very intelligent person, and Palpatine acknowledged that, but he didn't want anyone to be like, Oh, we let an alien in bore on in our uh, inner circle. Here you go. You know, here's the Death Star. So yeah, I feel like he would understand. I think he would be, you know, more understanding of this rebel threat. And had he, you know, had Palpatine trusted Thrawn with more uh, responsibilities and more, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Look, you know, more uh, duties, you know, if he was in charge, uh, if he was put in charge of the Death Star, and even the second Death Star, I feel like, yeah, he would have, you know, he would have had more, um, we would have had more victories, but still, he'd be under the Emperor's thumb. 
Whereas in the Outer Rim, you know, he could he was far away from all of that. Anyway. So, I feel like, yeah, also, he would have, you know, he would have realized, maybe, you know, the, Re the, the Rebels are getting a little too close. Maybe I should leave, uh, take my shuttle and get out of here and stay from a safe distance. Yeah. Also, I feel like he would have handled Battle of Endor a lot better. Yeah. Anyway. And yeah, why didn't Palpatine put him in charge of, you know, the second Death Star? That would, you know... Okay, I need a true military commander here. Who have I got? Who have I got? Tag? All right, you go. No, 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 Thrawn, you stay out in space. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, second question: the Separatists versus the Empire. Who would win? If you guys remember, we kind of had that in, Star in Battlefront Two, where a Geonosian made a droid army and you had to fight them. That was kind of cool, but. Yeah, full-on Separatist army versus the Empire. I gotta give it to the Empire because the Empire isn't really lenient. You separate from their planets, you're not gonna have a fun time. Anyway, third question. Why is that stormtroopers can't shoot for shit? Seriously, they need to go back to military school. Well, most one of the reasons people have theorized with stormtroopers is that there's not really a lot of training to being a stormtrooper. And a lot of the troopers you see are recruits. They're, they're young recruits, and yeah. But at the same time, they're like, it's the whole, you know, can't shoot the actors, but you gotta shoot at them. You know, you can't shoot them for real, but, you know, that is what it is. Hmm. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, there you go. Uh, so, third question. Third question. Um, why is it Stormtroopers... Oh, wait, that was your third question. Sorry! <laughs> but yeah, thank you for those questions, Darth Venom. Moving on now to the Grey Goblin, who asks, The Galactic Empire versus Dark Side and the Forces of, of Apocalypse. Who wins? Yeah. TIE Fighters and, the, and all of that can't really do much against gods and parademons now, can they? I'm giving this one to Dark Side. <laughs> Same question. How do you think it would have played out if Anakin died on Mustafar, Obi-Wan escaped, and the Empire had no Darth Vader? Um, yeah, if Anakin, if Anakin was killed by Obi-Wan, that would have been like a small hiccup in, in the Emperor's plan. He'd have just been the only Sith for a while, and instead would have spent some time looking for a new apprentice. He would have, you know, the whole rule of two thing. So, honestly, yeah, it would have been like, ah, oh, shit, the guy, I, you know, the, the guy I need to enforce my new empire is totally dead and shit. Fuck. So, what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? Um, find a new apprentice. But yeah, he still, it, it wouldn't really change much other than, you know, um, you know, Vader would not be there. Instead, of, you know, someone else would have been chosen. If not, you know... Uh, you know, Vader would have, you know, Palpatine would have found someone. He could have made even the Grand Inquisitor or Jarek from Star War, from the Kyle Katarn games into his new apprentice. Possibilities are endless. Um, third question. Mirror Universe Star Wars during the Imperial Era. How, how do, would that happen? I guess the Empire would be benevolent, but you've got the Rebellion, which are kind of, you know, they're more like extremists that want the Empire to fall. I don't know. Anyway, so thank you for those questions, Grey Goblin. Moving on now to Alexander Inayez, who asks, If you had the chance to join the Empire, what position would you want to hold? Um, I don't know, because you always have the fear of getting shot of kill of death, even, uh, even more so than your own guys. So honestly, I don't know what position I would want. Maybe... I, I want to I wanna have my own Star Destroyer, though. At the same time, I want to be the commander of my own Star Destroyer. Because nothing beats a Star Destroyer. Except a Super Star Destroyer, but that's another story. So, Captain of a Star Destroyer? I'll, get, I'll take that. Second question. What would the Crystal Gems think of such tyrannical rulers, and what would be their possession of human change after seeing them? I think they're, you know, I think staying so long on, on Earth, I think the Gems would kind of have a concept that not all humans are good and some of them are just really evil. I mean, I'm pretty sure they lived through World War II and, some, and saw some other really bad shit go on in the long time. I mean, I'm pretty sure they, they watched, you know, Columbus quintessentially wipe uh, help the ex near extinction of the Native Americans. So I'm just saying that they would understand that not, uh, not all humans are perfect, and that would also apply to the Galactic Empire. 
Anyway. Uh, third question. If the Rebels never won, do you really think the Empire could have lasted for a hundred, at least a hundred years like Palpatine said it would? Or would it collapse under its own power like Empires are overtaxing, um, for overtaxing their power? Um... The Sith Empire lasted a pretty goddamn long time, and it was infighting a lot. There was a lot of infighting, and yeah, Khan, you know, um, Lord Khan's empire lasted a little while. But yeah, the main thing is I think it could have lasted, but the main, th but the other thing you have to look at is that I doubt Palpatine would want to, you know, Palpatine would find some way to survive and continue on. Because here's the thing, yeah, he would, you know, he wants the Empire to continue on, but he wants to be the one in charge of it. So he would be trying to do the whole Darth Plagueis thing of, like, I have to survive, I have to keep living. So that would be the big, um, that would be the big story right there. Anyway, um, what else did I want to say? And yeah, I think it was supposed to be like 10,000 years rather than 100 years. Wasn't it? Wasn't it supposed to be like a 10,000-year a 10, imperial rule? I don't know. Um, anyway, where, uh, um, yeah, you're, yeah, oh yeah, that was your third question. But thank you for those questions, Alexander. Moving on now to... Um, Andre Partridge, who asks, "What if you had the choice as a stormtrooper? Would you sign up as a soldier in the front lines against the Rebel Alliance, or just work janitor of the Death Star?" I don't know. I mean, it's the Death Star, so I kind of know what's going to happen. Um, front lines also sound pretty bad, so I'm kind of screwed either way, aren't I? Um, so yeah, that's a that is that is a dilly of a pickle right there. All right. Second question. What characters from anime or cartoons do you think would make great members of the Empire? Shigo from Kim Possible. Dipper from Gravity Falls if you corrupted him and made him an Inquisitor. Because, here's the thing. I Like, in a lot of my headcanons, I always have that Dipper is evil, in some cases. And I always feel like, yeah, he, you know, he has all the ingredients of going dark side on somebody. Of, you know, going evil on somebody. Because he's intelligent, he's very quick-witted, and, yeah, I feel like he would be straight up inquisitor for the empire if he was if he was raised wrong anyway um what else did i want to say uh who else did i do i think uh hmm legato blue summers would probably be working for him as a special agent um legato from trigon i mean hmm that's a few I can think of right off the bat. Third question. How would the Galactic Empire react to the Urkin Empire, the Homeworld Gems, the Skrull Empire, the Reach, the Brood, the the Manhunters, and the Kree Empire? Okay, um, the Urkin Empire they would laugh at, because, uh, no, I think they'd be confused, like, how the hell did you forge all this? How? It's not even possible. You're idiots. Homeworld gems, they would be impressed, and I think they'd try to steal their technology. The Skrull Empire, like, pre pre post-Secret Wars invasion, yeah, they're just nothing but nomads now, so I think they'd laugh at them. So the Reach? Hmm. Yeah, the Reach would be something to behold for them. Um, uh, the Brood? The Brood is just a hive to them, and it'd just be a bunch of wild animals. The, the Manhunters, they'd be like a bunch of soulless robots. The Kree Empire, I think they'd be in, uh, impressed by, but they'd be like, yeah, you work for us now. <laughs> Alright. So thank you for those questions, Linerman. Moving on now. To, oh, wait. Sorry, un, Andre, Andre. Uh, yes, thank you for those questions, Andre Partridge. Now moving on now to Linerman0245, who asks... Do you think the Galactic Empire would never use anything like Reavers from Firefly and Experiments, and or would that be too huge a risk? They probably would. They in, they tried to use zombie stormtroopers. That experiment failed horribly for them. Second question. Do you think the Night Hunters, uh, Jedi hunting stormtroopers, will ever be implemented in the new movies? Probably not. Probably not, sadly. They, they probably won't be. Third question. The Galactic Empire's new leader is, is Lemon Grab. How badly does he fuck it up? He would never fuck it up because that is unacceptable! It's... I can't do his voice. I just can't. I can't go that high. I'm not Justin Rowland. I'm sorry. 
So thank you for those questions, Linerman. Moving on now to Predator Warrior 18, who asks, Do you think it's ridiculous how Palpatine and many other Imperial officers have believed that their stormtroopers were better than clone troopers, considering how clone troopers were obviously superior in combat, tactics, and marksmanship? I yeah, I never really got why didn't you stick with the clone troopers there? Um I mean, yeah, he kept the five in the original continuity. The only clone army, the only clone group was the 501st, and they worked personally for Vader. So, and in the new canon novels, there are clones that still work for the Empire. You know, there are clones out there that still work for him. But yeah, I never got, you know, that's a good question. Clones were, you know, cl you had a security army right there that took out the Jedi. Was it, you know, cloning disputes? I don't know. But I can understand, you know, you know, making your own army. But whatever. Um. Anyway, second question: What do you think would be like if Mara Jade met Black Widow? Oh, it would not be fun. That would not be a fun experience for Natasha. Just no way. All right. So, third question: How epic would it be if eighteen um, ATATs fought one Zillow Beast? and a Gorag, the giant alien from Force Unleashed 2. Yeah, that'd be pretty epic, but I'm pretty sure a lot of them would get smashed. Anyway. Any of those questions, Predator Warrior 18, moving on now to Jason Voorhees 2011, who asks, which Stormtrooper design is your favorite? Personally, I don't have one at the moment, but the Death Troopers from Rogue One is starting to inch its way to the top. Me, I personally love the old classic Stormtrooper uniform, the old, stu uh, the old uh, you know, Stormtrooper look. I just like it. I just like the classic look. It's, you know, it's it's um, it's sleek, but at the same time, it's very, you know, la it looks dangerous. Like, it looks scary. I th because here's the thing, yeah, Stormtroopers, they've named them literally after, a not you know, Nazi death squads. That's the, yeah, Stormtroopers were in the, in the World War II, they were Nazi death squads, so naming it after that is terrifying in its own right. Plus, you know, the the the, um, the original designs for Stormtroopers that um, George Lucas had was to make them look more skull-like. So that's another terrifying thought. It's just, just like this faceless, uh, soul, this faceless army coming to kill you. Anyway. Second question. Which other inter intergalactic empires from comics, TV, or movies would you like to see the, Je the Empire go to war with? The Gem Empire would be pretty cool. Yeah, the Gem Empire... Would be really cool to see. Um, I'd like to see the Empire fight Muni. That'd be fun. All right. Third question: How do you how do you think uh, how would oh how would you introduce Thrawn into Rebels? I think I would have it that after you know the whole thing at the Sith Temple, and now Vader's like, look, I'm done. These Rebels, you know, they're no longer a threat. We've beaten them, we've broken them, but we still need a presence in the Outer Rim. So I think Vader would go to Thrawn and be like, look, the, there's still a Rebel present. It's not persist. It's still not persistent. But you need to wipe it out and keep them disorganized. This re this Rebel alliance needs to end, and you're the person to do it. I can't. I have to go back to Coruscant. You take care of it. I'll give you the Inquisitors, I'll give you everything. And yeah, I feel like Thrawn would be a very formidable opponent. I feel like he would be the right guy to just completely wreck your shit backwards. Anyway. Sending those questions, Jason Voorhees, 2011. Um, moving on now to the gangster shy guy who asks, How would you... Um, who would you say was the most successful moth? Yeah. It, it's Tarkin. Grand Moff Tarkin. There's no... You know, there's no debate or anything of that. Uh, of that, it's it's Grand Moff Tarkin. It's obviously Tarkin. There's, you know, there's no other explanation, really. There's, there's not. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. Third question. What are your thoughts on? Oh wait, second question. What are your? Per, what would your personality be if you were a Grand Moff? Probably really cold and and. You mean, and me throwing my weight around as a as an imperial as a high ranking member of the empire, probably be that. Just saying. Sorry to get some water. Third question: What are your thoughts on the imperial engineer's designs? You know, someone has to really explain to me one day that no one caught the whole exhaust port that was two meters wide and it blows the whole station up. Someone, I love you, Galactic Empire. But someone had to have like noted, had to have noted, and I really hope they address this 
I would love to see them address this in Rogue One, where it'd be like, really, it's one exhaust port to blow it up? How they not? How did they miss that? Come on. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> Imperial engineers, was it? I don't know. Someone needed to be fired, and I'm pretty sure someone was fired out of an airlock after um, after that whole uh, fiasco. But anyway, thank you for those questions, gangster shy guy. All right. Moving right along to Cody Bradish, who asks, A small s a faction of troops from the Empire tries to take over a planet that Equestria in the whole of MLP series takes place on without di direct assistance from Empire and Darth Vader. But the ponies do get aid from Rebels. How do you think both sides would which one would come out on top? Probably be MLP, because they got the resources now. They <laughs> Yeah, probably be them. Second question. How do you think it would, um, you would be able to handle the living in the galaxy Star Wars takes place and ruled under the Empire? Probably not well, because it was a darker. T it's a it's a it's a really dark time. It, it was a really not fun place to be. It was the worst of times. It was the wor even worst of times. Yeah. All right. Third question: Say the Lyoko warriors are somehow teleported to the galaxy of Star Wars and get into the direct conflict with the Empire. How well do they fare, and do you think they could last long enough in contact with them and get into contact with the Rebel Alliance? I think they could. I could see you know them hanging out in the Star Wars universe. That's a I, th I could see that. I can honestly see that. All right. <clears throat> so thank you for that, those questions, Cody. Moving on now to Jesse Sutres, who asks, how epic would it be? If there were a five to six part book series centered around the particular transient extraterrestrial who begins a story as a informant for the Empire, joins the Rebels against the Separatists, ends his, or his character arc in becoming a gray Jedi, wandering the galaxy. Eh, that'd be pretty cool in the long run. Very extensive, but yeah. And I also feel like that was the story of Kyle Katarn. You just you just mentioned right there. Just feel like that was loosely based on Kyle Katarn. Same question. Although many fans enjoy speculating that Ben Solo's superior is Darth Plagueis, who was able to preserve his life force, even being slain by his apprentice, how do you feel, despite being the original character, Snoke himself was actually a being possessed by the Emperor's master after being... Here's the thing. They've announced recently that, yeah, Snoke is not Plagueis. I repeat, Snoke is not Plagueis. He is his own entity. Yeah. Yes, I've never believed for a second that Plagueis was Snoke. I've never believed that for a second. Well, there was a brief moment where I was like, is he Plagueis? And I was like, nah, he ain't Plagueis. He ain't Plagueis. So yeah, he is... And now they've officially announced Snoke is not Darth Plagueis. So, yeah, I guess that rumor's put to bed. Third question, do you believe it's possible for a low-level stormtrooper to achieve the rank of Imperial Admiral, Admiral if they were skilled enough to do so? Probably, yeah, because there's always... Um, here's the weird thing. You always... these um, In the Empire, you get weird... If you do something really good in front of your superiors, you're instantly promoted wildly. Like, Captain Piet, after, you know, Vader killed, Ad, you know, Ozzel, he instantly promoted him to Admiral. Just instantly, right there. And for those who don't know, there is a huge fuck ton of ranks between Captain and Admiral you have to get to. So, yeah... <laughs> They're just yeah. It's possible for a stormtrooper to become an admiral at some point if he does a good enough job. <clears throat> All right, moving right along to Dylan Malone fourteen. Thank you for those questions, by the way, Jesse. Moving on now to Dylan Malone fourteen, who asks, "Do you think that the Galactic Empire could be used for a force of good if it had better leadership?" Yeah, probably could have been, but it wasn't. Sadly. Second question: What other characters outside of Star Wars do you uh, do you see working under the Empire? Kind of already answered this one, Dylan. Sorry. If you were the new Empire, what would you do and why? Hmm. Fuck bitches every night. That would be my first degree. My first degree would be. I'm a fuck bitches every night. <laughs> So there you go. I will move on, but I'm not apologizing for that joke, because you. I'm pretty sure all of you laugh too. <laughs> so moving right along to Christopher Rosa, who asks, 
What are your thoughts on the Fell Empire from Star Wars Legacy and the First Order compared to the original Galactic Empire and the old Star Wars expanded Imperial Remnant? Um, the Fell Empire was pretty cool. I was never a big fan of Legacy because I feel it was too far out there. And I was like, I don't know if I really want to read Star Wars Universe in the far future. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was cool. I mean, Darth Krayt was obviously really cool, and the Sith Empire he created was really cool. But a lot of stuff I was just like, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like Star Wars to me. Second question. What do you think Jason Solo, Jaina Solo, Anakin Solo, Jagged Fell, uh, Tari Vale, and Ben Skywalker would think of the First Order? They'd be like, <laughs> we, we fought a lot worse. <laughs> You're nothing. <laughs> you are absolutely jack shit to us. If you made a patchwork fic, if you don't know what that is, that's a term for fanfic where the author uses particular characters from different adaptations. Yeah, I know what that is. I, I just like I just wanted to read all of that out, but I knew what that was. I've done that a few times in my fanfiction, just taking bits and pieces. My good friend Jason Voorhees does that as well, of taking bits and pieces and making a universe of its own. Uh, using the old and new Star Wars expanded universe, how would you make it? Um, I would keep Jason and Jaina solo for one thing. Keep Thrawn. Hopefully he's coming back. Keep Mara Jade. Yeah. Keep those guys. Yeah. Totally do that. Anyway, thank you for those questions, Christopher. Moving on now to Shockwave Spider, who asks, Which villains outside of Star Wars as Emperor Zerg, Lord Hater, Zim, Mojo Jojo, Lord Dominator, Vilgax, and Azula would make great leaders or members of the Galactic Empire? Okay, Zerg, if we're going by... Even by the cartoon, he was still a little incompetent. Lord Hater, no. Mojo and Zim, no. Vilgax, yeah. Azulo, Azula, yeah, she'd lead the Empire pretty well. Dominator, yeah. She probably, I mean, she, she acts like a teenager, but still, I feel like she could run an Empire. And she kind of does already, so. <sighs> Same question. Do you think the First Order is a lot better than the Empire, or just the same? Well, considering we only had one movie, I can't really judge, so... Yeah, we don't really have much more to go on with the with the First Order. Like, how many planets do they control? Is it just a military faction? Um, you know, how powerful are they? Are they just an extremist group? There's so many questions in there. It's not like with the Galactic Empire, where you knew the Galactic... It was an empire. Everything was under the Empire's control. So, fuck you. Um, fuck you, First Order, for not explaining how much power you had. The Empire, first movie, you already knew. Yeah, we were everywhere. We're just everywhere. Come on. First Order, I don't know how much power they have, and I'm really hoping next few movies they, they explain how powerful the, for, or the First Order has become since the decimation of the Empire. Second question. Do you think the... Oh, wait, that was the second question. Sorry. If you were the Empire and your own Galactic Empire, what members would you want working for you? Who would I want working for me? Tarkin, a lot of the moths, a lot of the moths, um, and I would, ha I would, you know, I'd let them lead. I would let them lead, and you know, I would just be the the guy at the top giving orders to them. But I'd let them handle the military pro um, issues. Anyway, let's think of those questions. Shockwave Spider. Moving on now to Trevor Smolka, who asks, if the Galactic Empire was so powerful, why did it fall so evenly? easily, even with two Sith Lords aside, I'm just saying, didn't really exactly fall, it was just like, even, you know, even, um, I'm gonna quote Baron Zemo from Civil War on this, if an, if an empire falls from its enemies, it has a chance to rise again, and that's what happened. The First Order is still the Empire, they're just something completely new and different. You know, well, it's still the Empire, they're just, you know, the monster that was created out of them, you know. Same question. If the, Gal if the Galactic Empire ever met the Sith Empire, the Emperor, from Star Wars Old Republic Knights of the Fallen Empire, who would win the entire fight? Oh, already answered this one, yeah. Final question. If Admiral Thrawn was the main villain in Star Wars Rebels, do you, if, how excited would you be to think it was really a bad idea, in my opinion, to see Admiral Thrawn as a main villain in Star Wars Episode Eight, Supreme Leader Snoke, Kylo Ren, but that's... Here's the thing. I would love to see Thrawn somewhere in here, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be the main villain of Season 3. You know... Um, frickin' Dave Filoni just can't keep it, you know, can't keep his mouth shut about that shit, so pretty sure Thrawn's gonna be the main villain there. So, pre that's probably going to be, you know, that's where we're only gonna see him, sadly. But, yeah, 
I... Hmm, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking to myself... I, at the same time, I don't want to see him because I feel like, yeah, Rebels, it's just, it's just not great. It's not great. Anyway, thank you for those questions, Trevor. Moving on now to Burnouter7, who asks, How would a war between the Galactic Empire and the Arachnids from Starship Troopers go? Thousands of troopers would die, but I feel like the Empire would handle the Arachnid Swarm a lot better than the Federation did. Because the Federation just threw grunts at it, and that's what the Empire would do too at first. But then they'd be like, no, nah, let's just bomb the planet from above with our, star with our Star Destroyers and Super Star Destroyers. Second question. If three fictional alien armies, would you like to see fight the Galactic Empire? Um, the... Scroll em no, the Shi'ar Empire. Shi'ar Empire from X-Men, from Marvel in general. Um, yeah, Shi'ar, the dominant, uh, the control, uh, yeah, the Weaponers from uh, from DC Comics, and the Romulan Empire, for shits and giggles, from Star Trek, yeah. Alright, who would win a fight between Darth Vader and the Lich King? How would a fight between those two go? Ah, you see, the Lich King was like this all-powerful being with dark magic, but then Vader had, you know, he was a very powerful being in his own right. Oh, man, this is a tough one, honestly. This is a, this is a real power. And the other thing was the Lich was really hard to kill, but it, he had speed. I don't know. It's a, that is a tough one. That is a tough one. Oh, the Lich King. I thought you were talking about the Lich from... Oh, I thought you were talking about the Lich from... <laughs> from from Adventure Time, my bad. But no, I think, honestly, yeah, the, if it's Arthas as the Lich King, yeah, the, he, he could take out several raid members in a group, so... And his power was... He was incredibly powerful. Now, if it was Arthas, just Arthas as the Dread Knight, as a Death Knight, or Dread Knight, I always get the two mixed up, fuck. I think, yeah, Vader and Arthas would be evenly matched, but with Arthas with the power of the Lich King... Yeah, I'm gonna. I might lean towards the Lich King more. The dude could bring bring back entire armies of scourges, so gives you any indication. Anyway, so thank you for those questions. Um, Burnout are moving on now to Wolfman the Impaler, who asks: The Empire declares war on the Federation from Star Trek. What happens, and which race would take which side? Well. I guess the Romulans would be siding with the Empire, because they're the strongest, so would the Cardassians. Um, the Borg would try to be assimilating everybody, the Ferengi would be terrified of the Empire, and the Klingons would be the only... the Klingons would probably be the only major ally. But then again, I think the Romulans may ally themselves as well, but it would be tense between Klingons and Romulans. Sorry, my nose is so soft up. I, I know I've been snorting that, you know, making those horrible, disgusting sounds throughout this entire Q&A, and for that I'm so sorry, but I'm so, my nose is so stuffed up, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> anyway, as I was saying, as I was saying, the major thing with this, um, it would be a tough one, and I feel like, uh, the Frangays would stay out, Romulans could go either way, I don't know, but the Klingons and the Federation... But here's the thing, the Federation, they're, they're explorers. There aren't really a lot of military-grade ships in, the, in the, the Galactic Federation. They're made for exploration. They do have weapon capabilities, but the Empire is built for, you know, their ships are built for combat. Anyway, second question. The Galact uh, Galactus enters Imperial space. How does Palpatine and his most trusted advisors react? Oh, shit. <laughs> Just, oh, shit, all over the place. <laughs> all right. Third question. What would a group of Grand Moffs react to the First Order? I feel like they would be a lot... They would be like... Oh, except Tarkin, would he be a little leery? But still be like, I can see where they're going with this. Well, the rest of the Moffs would be like, we should have done this shit years ago. Anyway. Thank you for those questions, Wolfman. Moving on now to NX57, who asks, The Empire versus the Borg, who wins? Might give it to the Borg, because I, t I shudder to think what they would do with an assimilated Star Destroyer. Second question, what would you do with your own Super Star Destroyer? Get in, uh, I would be the only person in line at McDonald's. Fuck you, I'm in... Uh, fuck you, every drive-thru I've been to at McDonald's. Fuck you, 
Fuck you. Fuck you. I am going. If I take a Super Star Destroyer to your lane, you are damn well giving me my food, or I'll blow the fuck out of your building with my laser turret, turbo cannon, whatnots. Fucking drive through. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> uh, third question: What do you think it had been? What is the? Oh wait. What do you think has been the most atrocious act perpetrated by the high post? Uh, the high point of the Empire. Not counting... Well, blowing up Alderaan. That's a that's a very high one. Yeah, blowing up Alderaan. Jerk... So, moving on... Thank you all... So, eh, excuse me. Thank you for those questions. NX, moving on now to Jerkwater100, who asks, How come Tarkin outranked Vader? He didn't necessarily outrank him. He just stood on the same ground as Vader, and they had a lot... And Vader and Tarkin had a lot of respect for one another. It wasn't so much outranking, more like there was a kind of weird pseudo-trust there between Tarkin and Vader. They had a lot of respect for one another, and, yeah, they, uh, um, Vader and Tarkin kind of considered the, each other as uh, friends. Not like best friends, but more like, you know, work friends that understood any, uh, stood each other. Anyway. Third question, second question, excuse me. What is your favorite parody sketch from any media that focuses on the Galactic Empire? Anything the, the Empire did from Robot Chicken. Yeah, Robot Chicken Empire. Oh, oh, another thing. It's not really a parody, but it's fucking awesome, which is the fan film series called, um, I think it's called The Revenge, uh, the, um, the Relentless, that's it, the IMPS Relentless, which is this docu this mockumentary series focusing on this uh, made up, but it should have been made, at the same time, this ship called the Relentless, which is this giant star um, star destroyer slash carrier that goes around space hunting down rebels, and it's and it's actually narrated by Peter fucking Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime himself. It's awesome. Also, the same I think the same crew also did a uh, cops parody with stormtroopers, so that's really cool too. Anyway, why? So, third question. Do you think the Galactic Empire uses more droids from the Separatists? Eh, I don't think they did. They just didn't care for it. They just didn't need droids, I guess. Alright, think of those questions. Uh, moving on now to Nicola... Uh, think of those questions. Jerkwater, moving on now to Nicholas Harley, who asks, The Galactic Empire versus the Saiyans. Who wins? The Saiyans. Just not e I'm not even gonna, you know, try to defend it. It's the Saiyans. Because they, they can live out in space. They can blow pl all, you know, they can blow a ship up with an energy blast. They can turn to fucking giant monkeys. Monkeys with laser beams out of their mouths. I don't think I need to say more. Anyway, second question. The Crystal Gems and their arsenal versus the Death Star. Who wins? Gonna give it to the Gems on that one. Darth Maul versus John Cena! Who wins? Maul. But John, C but John Cena... But he'd have to be hand-to-hand. -hand. John Cena's pecs is too powerful to be cut by any mere lightsaber. Or so I'm told. I don't watch wrestling. Let's <laughs> think of those questions, Nicholas. Moving on now to Darth, Darth Nerdum, who asks... What would these real-life people think of the Galactic Empire? Stalin, Hitler, Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, Al Capone, and um, Pablo Ecuador. Uh, I think they'd be impressed. I'm not, but they're all pretty evil, so yeah. But I feel like Palpatine would be like, like sitting from his Imperial shuttle while he's flipping. He's looking down, or he's just flipping them off, like, "Oh, you guys ruled only small, you know, small continents or small, large land masses of the planet. I ruled the fucking galaxy." Oh, da 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 da. Oh. <laughs> so thank you for those, that question, Darth Nerdum. Moving on now to. Brian Cam, yeah, Brian Cam, hope I'm saying that last name right, who asks, first question, Lord Dominator inner forces versus the entire Empire, including Vader, Palpatine, the Death Star, Stormtroopers, Legions, Imperial Armada, who wins? I think, you know, Dominator only has one ship and a whole legion of robots. 
Vader and the Pal and Palpatine have an entire empire, and in a, in a weird extent, Dominator has her own empire in her own in her own way. But I think the empire just overwhelm her. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's um, that's the way I see it. Anyway, so second question: uh, second question, what would the Empire think of the First Order, especially Palpatine of Snoke and Vader of his grandson Kylo? Uh, I think they would be impressed equally, and I think Palp you know, Palpatine would look at Snoke and be like, eh, "It ain't me, but he's pretty good." And I think Vader, if this is before Vader, I think he would be both really saddened that you know another member of his fan, you know, he, uh, you know. He, another Skywalker's fall into the dark side, but at the same time, I feel like he'd be proud of it. I don't know, it's just really hard to explain, but that's how I kind of see it. Anyway. So, that was your second question. Your third question is, also, I don't know if this counts, but why do you think the First Order worships Vader and not the Emperor? Well, it's just not, it's not really, Va they worship Vader, that's just Kylo. Kylo just worships his grandfather, they and yeah, who knows? Um, maybe the First Order really worships Palpatine. Um, that might be the case. All the only real villain worshiping going on is Kylo to Vader. For all we know, Hux is probably a huge fan of, of Tarkin. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for those questions, Brian Cam. Moving on now to Rakai Tue. Hope I'm saying that name right. Who asks? The Galactic Empire discovers our Earths and invades. No Death Star. How do you think our play, uh, how would it play out? Probably not good for anybody. We'd be taken over in less than a day. Maybe a week. Two weeks stops. Second question. The Galactic Empire assumes control of all world governments, but destroys holiest and sacred places, the Vatican and even the Mecca. How do you think extremist religions factions would react to this? Uh, about as well as you think. They, yeah, there'd be some shitstorms from that. Third question. Assuming Earth's military forces somehow ward off the Empire, how do you think the Rebel Alliance would react to this and Earth had some Imperial Tech remnants? Knowing us, if we had Imperial Tech remnants, we'd be using it to kill each other. Let's be honest here, people. That's the only re you know, e you know, and I really hope, uh, and, I, and I know it won't, but I really do hope, again, I know it won't, that Independence Day resurgence, when they talk about how we harvested their technology to benefit our own in those twenty in that twenty year gap, I like to you know I'm pretty sure that yeah that's you know the world literally just tried to use all of their alien technology slash human fused technology to kill people you know to kill each other. Ugh. Anyway, thank you for those questions, uh, Rakai. Moving on now to Pinky Pool Gamer Brony who asks. The world of Guardians of the Galaxy take on the Galactic Empire. Oh, would the Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy take on the Galactic Empire? Yeah, Evil Empire. Yeah, that, that fits their repertoire. Second question: Rogue One coming out this holiday season. What do you think of the new Stormtroopers? And would Darth Vader make a cameo in Rogue One? We already know that Vader is going to be in Rogue One. That's a given. The, the new st Stormtroopers called Death Troopers, which I still can't get out of my head because in the novels, Death Troopers were zombies. You know, there were zombie stormtroopers and zombie everything. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm really interested in these death troopers. Maybe they're, you know, personal stormtroopers or Vader. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking, is that maybe in this new continuity, those are Vader's personal stormtroopers. Kind of like similar to how the 501st was in the original continuity. Maybe something like that. Um, third question. Since Disney owns both Star Wars and Marvel, would the Avengers or X-Men take on a Galactic Empire in a full-on assault? Well, you won't see the X-Men there, because, Mar you know, Disney really wants you to forget that they don't have the rights to, you know, they don't have the movie rights, excuse me, yeah, they don't have the movie rights to X-Men, just Fox does, and, yeah, probably just Avengers, so, yeah, that would be the case. Anyway, move and right, think of those questions, Pinky. Think of those questions, Pinky Pool. Moving on now to Media Detective, who asks, "Which assassin group do you would join the Empire? Which assassin group? Mm, the Hand, probably the Hand. Could you imagine them with like like lightsaber shit and stuff? All right, all right. Do you believe Griffin from the Golden Age arc from Berserk would make an excellent Grand Moth? 
Oh, most definitely. He has all the, you know, the, ch the perfect checklist for being a moth. So yeah, he would be a Grand Moth Tarkin. Tarkin would be like, yeah, you're, you're, you're with us now. Third question. Which villains from shows, anime, comics do you think would be high-ranking Imperial officers or tacticians? Um, again, I kind of answered this one, but I guess this is actually kind of a loophole now that I think about it, because he's asking where I could see certain characters in the Empire. But again, I kind of already... I don't know. I guess I'll just add on by saying I think Shigo from Kim Possible would make a good Inquisitor. Anyway... Anyway, thank you for those questions, Media Detective. Moving on now to Creed Luvari. Hope I'm saying that last name right. Who asks, How do you think the Galactic Empire would react to X-Men and mutants in general? Probably a genetic um, freak of nature that needs to be destroyed and or, you know, weaponized. That's probably how it would go. Third question, Would you like to see a movie or TV show based about the everyday life of a stormtrooper and what the low-level guys in the Empire do? Yeah, I've always wanted that. I have wanted that since day one. What, that would make the perfect Netflix show, focusing on stormtroopers and make it like jar, star, a Star Wars equivalent of Jarhead. Why the fuck hasn't anyone done this yet? I'm just saying that is perfect, and you know it's goddamn perfect. Ugh, anyway... All right. Would you join the Empire or the Rebellion? Well, you got to look. You, you look at death either way, and you, but on the other hand, in the Empire, you look at death from everywhere, not just Rebellion, but you know, from your own guys from tr who are trying to get up in the, you know, getting up uh, on the world, or you fail once and you probably get shot or strangled. Just saying. It's probably be sit on my couch and hope for the best. <laughs> anyway. I think with those questions, Creed, moving on now to um, Andrew Schaefer, who asks, What idiot is teaching Imperial troopers to be such lousy shots? I already answered this one, technically, so, yeah. If it's anyone, it's Zim, though. Alright, do you think that Agent Callus is going to get some kind of redemption arc in Season 3 of Star Wars Rebels? I, I can see it. I, would, I wouldn't, you know... They kind of left it open in that episode between him and Zed. That was, um... I could see it. I could honestly see that happening. It's a po I think it's a, it's a possibility. They left it open enough there. So, yeah, I think Callus could actually switch sides. But again, Rebels, you got to do something really good for Season 3. Because, yeah, Season 2, I rewatched it and I was like, outside of the stuff with Vader, it's really boring. <laughs> All right. It's take your one, your son to work day, the Death Star. What more on actually does so? Maybe a stormtrooper named Gary. If you watch Robot Chicken, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, thank you for those questions, Andrew. Moving on now to RoboKaiju75, who asks, What would the Klingon race from Star Trek think of the Galactic Empire? A bunch of honorless dogs that need to be exterminated. That's literally how they would be. The Sith meet Space Godzilla. How screwed are they? Unless they can reach into Space Godzilla's mind, then, yeah, they're going to be... He's going to be wrecking their shit constantly. Third question. What would the Emperor Zerg think of Darth Maul? I think he would be like, Oh, hmm, I could use a guy like you on my team. And that's probably how it would go. But anyway, guys, uh, that looks like it's all the questions. Once again, I want to thank everyone uh, for sending in questions. This was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and once again, if I did not answer someone's question, that usually means it was either marked as spam or didn't show up at all. But yeah, once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.